This charming beauty is the Finch Knives Buffalo Tooth. This was sent to me by Spencer and Steve of Finch Knives. Thank you, gentlemen. This thing is awesome. I love this knife. I've had it for two weeks now, <clears throat> and I've carried it every single day. Um, if I'm wearing shorts, like on the weekend, this has been my primary. And um, on work days, regular days when I'm walking around with a bigger folder, this has been my secondary knife. But it's been on me constantly, and I just can't, I just can't quit this knife. I just can't quit you, Finch. Buffalo Tooth in 154 cm. Uh, this knife is unusual in how broad it is and how big it is um, in this dimension uh, as compared to the length. But it's based, like many of their knives, on a traditional slip joint pattern called the, sometimes it's called the sunfish, other times it's called the elephant toe, the elephant toenail. Um, and I think it might have a couple of other names, but uh, I'll show you. Here, here's a marbles version of a sunfish or elephant's toenail. And it's just a big, broad blade with a, um, in this case, it's a cigar-ended jack, or not jack, but a cigar-ended pen knife, technically, because it's got uh, a blade coming out from either side. And it's equal-ended, meaning, well, this one tapers, so it's like a sleeve board. Uh, from an old ironing board, and then this is more like shaped like a cigar. But in any case, uh, the the real indicator of of a knife like this is the real broad blade. So I love that they have gone and done this audacious design and and uh, you know made a modern flipping version of the sunfish or elephant toenail. Um, and I thought from pictures, I thought, oh, it's cool. I like it conceptually. It's a great idea to take that knife and turn it into a modern flipper for a very small portion of the knife buying public. But then I got it and I think this is a hit. I This is my favorite Finch knife in a long time. And I, I love them. I mean, I love their knives and that's how much this one jumps out, out at me. And like I said, on paper, it, it didn't do that for me. I just thought it was an interesting um, and bold idea but man, they just, they really executed it ideally. Uh, so it comes in three different cover materials, this beautiful Coca-Bolo wood, and then it also comes in a jigged titanium and a abalone um, handle scale. And they're all beautiful, but I, I have to say, I am pleased as punch that they sent me this Coca-Bolo. I think that it makes this knife. The other materials are beautiful and I love jigging just as a general concept, because I love it in all of my traditional knives, and I love seeing jig jigging on modern knives like that recent QSP Penguin. I think it's cool. Uh, but I, to my eye, it's this that takes the cake. This material just looks best to me, to my eye, with this whole setup. And this knife just strikes me as a gentleman's knife. And that's the funny thing. I've been mentioning that on the podcast, how this to me is a gentleman's knife, but it goes against everything that I think of a gentleman's knife as. I always think of a gentleman's knife as very slender, like probably half as slim as this in all aspects and, you know, small and light. This is, you know, this is pretty light for the size. Uh, by the way, this is QSP made. Pretty light for the size, uh, but... Lightness is not its main virtue. Um, smallness is certainly not its main virtue. Um, but what is its main virtue, you say? It is this blade. It's that cutting blade. Um, uh, but what makes it a, a gentleman's knife to me is just the way it looks uh, with the wood. And the others, yes, but with the wood especially. And, and I'll get back to the blade in a second. But let me explain to you what I mean. Like, here, there's a nice, there's my saddleback wallet, nicely patinaed. Um, here, let's take my my Seiko, put it there, and keys, and fixed blade, that's a hog tooth, and, you know, Hank and a, and a pen, and then put this knife among all this stuff. It's like, I don't know, it's just at home with all these gentlemanly accoutrements. I'll get the keys out of there. I don't like the branding. Uh, but just, you see what I mean? I mean, to me, 
that just fits in in with all of these sumptuous materials you know uh, this cool nylon that nice patinaed leather this beautiful uh burgundy and the pen and i don't know so to me i i just this is like a gentleman on the weekend style knife gentleman on the weekend this is not necessarily very good for slacks but gentlemen don't just wear slacks and suits right they also wear corduroys and, or corduroy patched elbow sweaters and uh you know uh walk on rugged shores in the winter you know and then this is the kind of knife for that um you'd think that's nuts and you should because that's just my my the kind of thing that comes to my mind all right uh inch and a half broad with an inch and a quarter uh to that taper to that bevel it's wickedly wickedly sharp and thin behind the edge uh, and that is thanks to that broadness, no doubt, and the angle grind, of course. 154 cm blade steel. You've got nail nicks in both sides. And no, you cannot spidey flick out of those nail nicks. I certainly can't. Maybe if you have fingernails that unnaturally curve in the opposite direction, you might be able to sink it in there, but just not, not doable. You have a nice Finch style flipper tab, which is low profile when closed but just great jimped and all that. Just great for grabbing and deploying. And then once it's open, it offers you this jimped spot to put your finger so you can, so you can come, I call it an inverse choil. You know, the, you, on the uh, paramilitary too, you got that choil, you can, you can, oh, that's the military, grab the wrong one. Anyway, you kind of have that choil right there. You can ride up in and sink your finger down in. Well, this, presents a stage, a platform that you wrap wrap it around and it's very, very comfortable. And all the Finch knives have that, and I love that. Um, because you get a choil type thing, choil type utility without digging into the blade. And you still have a, um, a sharpening choil that gives you plenty of room without bumping into anything over here. So anyway, really, really well executed. Nail notch, I don't know, if you live in, somewhere where this is just not allowed, I don't know, or or you're at the office and you don't want to pop this open and scare the sheeple, you might grab the, uh, the nail necks. Very, very nice. Man, I love bolster locks, and I really like Finch's bolster locks. They have two main styles. They have the uh, full liner lock with the material, whether it's wood or micarta or uh or bone uh that comes all the way up to the uh actually i only think they have bone in the bolster versions but uh in any case it's the whole thing with a liner lock or they do these bolster locks and i think in my collection i think now it skews more to towards bolster locks but i think i was about half and half before this one showed up it's already like i said before um it's already got some scratches because I am carrying it a lot. Not much on the on the clip. I'm doing a lot of dropping it in my pocket, gotta say. But I don't know where these scratches have come from. But, um, you know, they make it easier to carry. There is a little crack in the wood here. That is one concern. I am going to keep this oiled. Uh, I don't want it to shrink or anything. But that is one aspect of using natural materials on knives. That is an issue, especially if they're made in foreign countries. Because... Uh, you know, if this is over there in China, the coca bola wood, the steel and everything, and it's made over there and it's stored over there until it's shipped over here. And then it, it, it makes the atmospheric changes on the way over. Well, it's probably on a ship, but in any case, once it gets over here, it's dealing with different humidity, depending on where it's going. This is all something Ben Belkin of Jack Wolf Knives talked to me about on one of the shows. Uh, the reasons why he's not using bone uh, is that, or wood, is that he doesn't want the natural materials to... Uh, in any way be compromised because of how different the climate is uh, where they're being made. So interesting concern in modern knife making, in the modern making of traditional style knives using uh, natural materials. All right, let me show this to you with a couple of other knives. First, uh, I, have, I brought this out thinking it was my paramilitary, so it's not a very good size comparison unless you carry a four inch military, but here it is with the three inch uh, RSK Mark I, just like the Griptilian, mini Griptilian. And 
here it is with a couple of sunfishes. I have three. I only brought two out. This is a cool one. It's a rough rider. I would really like to have a sunfish from GEC, but <coughs> that's a fishing expedition. I don't want to go on. And then this is the marbles I showed you before, given to me by Mike Latham of uh, Collector Knives. He had a, a bunch of old knives he didn't want. Knew I like some of these uh, less expensive, uh, high value folders, so he sent them to me. And then let me show you this with the Finch knives uh, with the bolster locks that I have. This is the Harvester, a really, really efficient cutter. Look at that downward angle. Uh, just a great knife for utility, for sure. Um, here it is with the 1929, the Charming, the Ever So Charming, and Scalpeline 1929. Uh, that was the year the Gra uh, Grand Teton National Park was founded, I believe. 154 cm, I think all the time, which I am all for. And then this is the knife that the Buffalo, finger, uh, the buffalo Tooth is in the running for as my favorite. I love the Holiday. It is my favorite Finch knife, and I, I find them all awesome, all really good cutters, and all very charming. But to me, the Holiday takes the cake. So here it is with the Holiday. Uh, takes the cake, that is, until this came along. Um, <clears throat> this Buffalo Tooth is just, man, it's a knockout. It's beautiful, and it, it, it really touched... Uh, something in me that I wasn't expecting. A uh, sense of nostalgia, um, you know, for an era that I never belonged in. I think that's technically what nostalgia is. But anyway, it touched that in me. And their knives are, are prone to do that anyway, um, due to the inspirations. But this one, I got to say, if you have any interest in this knife at all, or if it's if it's touched off something and you're like, huh, that, that buffalo tooth, I get it. Get it, and then if it doesn't please you, you sell it on the secondary market or whatever. But it will please you. It is awesome. And you can choose from three very different finishes. This beautiful wood, or the, the really intricately jigged titanium, or that swirly, dreamy uh, abalone. So choose your, pick your poison. They're all good. All right, that's the Finch Buffalo Tooth. Thanks for watching.